I've traveled from hours away today to get shots of shorebirds at sunrise, but I only have one morning to get the images I'm looking for. Little did I know the stories of struggle and triumph that were to come in the single morning would be even better than I had hoped for. Fittingly, after spending the previous night in the Sandpiper Inn in Morro Bay, I set out to get to my destination pre-sunrise. These sunrise shots of shorebirds often look best just before the sun actually rises, so my goal is to be able to get there with 30 minutes to spare. Almost immediately, our first problem arose. Our parking lot nearby the remote beach I was going to was closed. Flustered that I would now miss these sunrise shots that I had traveled so far for, I started driving a ways back up the road and found a pullout that had a trail leading down to the same beach. Grabbing my gear, I quickly set out in a scramble to try to get there in time. If I wasn't rushed, this hike would have actually been stunning to get to take in and enjoy. Moro Rock sat beautifully out in the distance, just above the fog layer, and I grabbed some shots of it in purple light. Along the way, I ran into a California scrub jay early morning in the dark and grabbed this shot here as well of the familiar bird. As I approached the sand spit, the sound of crashing ocean waves grew louder and louder. Amazingly, after rushing to the beach, I arrived just in time to pull off a couple of shots pre-sunrise while the lighting was still soft on the birds. Getting shorebirds at eye level can be challenging, but thanks to my new skimmer ground pod from Hunt's photo and video, I was well equipped. This skimmer ground pod allows me to get down eye level with the shorebirds easily while keeping it from falling in the sand. In addition, it allows me to be mobile and slide around easily, rather than having to pick up and readjust a tripod every single time. As the sun was rising, I began to capture its warmth against the cool blue ocean water. These sanderlings glowed in the distance as I captured them preening and scurrying around. One of the cool aspects of it all was that due to it being spring migration, many of these sanderlings are molting at different stages, which allowed me opportunities to capture some in angelic blank white colors and others in rich reddish tan colors. As they foraged through the wet sand, I was able to capture stunning images of these color contrasts. As they grouped up and foraged as a unit, I was also able to capture some cool moments of them side by side. Watching these little guys was such a cute and comical experience. One particular sanderling I was observing was on a hot streak finding sand crabs and digging them up to devour. Then, off to the side, I began to notice another sanderling eyeing his meal. Hilariously, this little thief was contemplating stealing the other's meal. When the other wasn't looking, this little buddy charged in and runs off with his meal. Furiously, the other sanderling chases him down, but was unsuccessful in re-obtaining his breakfast. So, the search continued for another sand crab along the shoreline, and this time, the sanderling was prepared. As other sanderlings began to surround and approach him, he defended his territory and chased them down so that he could successfully enjoy his meal. It's funny seeing such a cute, tiny, fluffy bird act feistily with its buddies like this. But nature doesn't play favorites. A lot of hard work finally paid off for such an essential breakfast meal during its spring migration. Good job, little guy. One vision I had for the day was capturing Moro Rock in the distant background behind a sandpiper or plover to give a beautiful wildlife photography scenic image to encompass the story of my day there. However, the fog layer above the ocean was too thick down low, and all morning long I couldn't get any catches of it in the background. I did, however, wind up getting some other wider shots of wimbrels and sanderlings that I liked, and this one here with a big crashing wave in the background wound up being one of my favorites. Wimbrels are extraordinary birds as well. Their curved beaks make them excellent at probing for food in the mud, and they were fun to watch forage for the morning. For anyone watching this video today and interested in purchasing the skimmer ground pod, Hunt's photo and video is giving away a discount on this item in my description below. After using this tool in a scenario like this, I'd highly recommend anyone in similar scenarios to purchase this accessory. 
As I was getting in shots of birds along the shoreline, I noticed a western gull far off in the distance walking. As I looked to where it was headed, I noticed a turkey vulture standing over carrion at that moment that I wasn't able to identify. Something must have washed up from the ocean or shore, and so taking advantage of this opportunity, I decided to move a little closer. I could tell it seemed to be some sort of large fish or something of the sort. The turkey vulture seemed to be having a great time eating his newfound meal, and while the adult western gull didn't want to seem to wait around for it, a smaller juvenile gull made his way over to the feast hoping to get a bite in. The pecking order of nature goes like this. The bigger, the stronger, the priority on who eats first. While this gull may have been hungry, the turkey vulture didn't feel like sharing his meal. And so for the next half hour, I crept closer and watched as this turkey vulture feasted and the gull circled his trophy hoping for just a scrap. Occasionally, the vulture would wander off a little bit and the gull would build up enough courage to go in and pick up a scrap of food. But even when he did this, the vulture would immediately come charging back to fend him off. As the vulture feasted, I was able to capture some pretty cool moody images of him eating at sunrise. Eventually, the vulture wandered far enough off to where the gull took up his opportunity to snag a bite. <laughs> Without hesitating, he swooped in and got a mouthful of entrails. How gorgeous. But for him, this was a needed snack. This moment didn't last long, however, as of course the vulture came running back to claim his territory, and so the cycle restarted. What an interesting story to come across on this day at the beach, and how exciting to capture on film. A while later, both birds wound up leaving the carry-on, and I went over to inspect what it was. Now, if you're squeamish, I recommend skipping forward 15 seconds in the video, because it was pretty gross, but this is what it wound up being. I'm not a huge ocean wildlife guy, so I don't really know what it was, but whatever it was, it was pretty huge at six or seven feet long, and pretty terrifying as well. I moved back away, and soon after, another turkey vulture swooped on in and took his turn at the breakfast table. Now, my biggest hope for today was to be able to capture a snowy plover at some point. I've never seen one and always wanted to photograph one, but unfortunately, as the day got later and later, I knew my chances were running thin. While I was waiting around photographing the vultures, to my excitement, a semi-palmated plover flew in and landed right in my shooting path. Not as snowy, but still exciting, as it was my first plover of the day that I got to photograph. Plovers are so fun to watch run around and dodge in and out of corners of kelp. Semi-palmated plovers are beautifully striped birds with gorgeous features, and at one moment, while it was approaching me, I wound up getting this stunning image of it against the warm and smooth fine-grained sand surrounding it. While I was watching this little guy run around, I wasn't seeming to get any other good angles on it. Just as I thought my day was coming to a close, you'll never believe what happened next. A pair of snowy plovers flew right on top of my location where I was lying prone and just sat there to relax. This video here was taken literally right from where it landed beside me and I hadn't moved an inch. I couldn't believe my luck. After traveling from hours away and searching all morning to find just one, two presented themselves right on my doorstep, and I got to witness some incredible moments with these cute little guys. As I watched them, one was starting to come a bit more active while the other was off taking a nap to the side. I followed them around through the viewfinder of my camera as they searched for food amidst the sandy kelp mountains. But the most amazing moment was yet to come. As they foraged, one started to move to an angle relative to me with much better lighting. Not only that, but it was beginning to walk up perfectly in line with Moro Rock, now unveiled by the sun. The pinnacle of scenery in the Moro Bay area, and the shot that I was praying for and imagining when I planned the trip. Not only being able to capture a scenic shot with Moro Rock in the background, but even better, capturing it with the most coveted bird of the trip, the snowy plover. All of these elements were beginning to align perfectly, and as the plover approached, I knew my moment had come, and so I pulled my finger to the shutter and I fired off the shot that I was dreaming of.
To my amazement, as I was walking back to the car through the sand dune hills, I ran across a pair of California quail foraging. Quail are so skittish in my area, and I never get the opportunity to capture them. So taking advantage of a beautiful lighting opportunity, I captured a portrait image of a gorgeous male standing watch over a female foraging below. It's amazing to watch the stories of food being fought for, territories being defended, and special moments that I get to capture as a photographer out in nature. What a beautiful creation. And I'm so thankful that I had the privilege of encountering these magnificent creatures on a magical morning at the beach. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd be honored if you subscribed. If you want to see another video like this one, check this one out here in the end screen. See you guys next time.